Welcome to Issues. We're going to continue talking about what is success all about. Several uh, shows ago, we talked to some individuals, some lawyers, and some others about what is success, their definition of success. This evening, I am truly excited to have the owner, co-owner of Allure with us. Uh, Allure is one of the beautician shops in Bermuda that has been very successful. So we're going to start off by asking her what is her definition of success. But first, Tasha, welcome to Issues. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. Now, my first question, what is your definition of success? My definition of success is doing something that you love and being successful at it. Um, you know, most of the time we think that success is this big um, thing that you have to, that doesn't seem like it's attainable. But for me, it's doing something that you love and being amazing at it. Now, I didn't hear you mention making lots of money. Nope. Because you could be, peace of mind is priceless. Mm -hmm. So you can have all the money in the world and not be happy. So that's why I said success is doing something you love. And that is what makes you successful, I feel. Yeah. And the money will come. Yeah, I want you to know, everyone that I've interviewed concerning success, while they say, yeah, we don't want to be poor, but money was not, making lots of money was not one of the high things in terms yeah. of achieving goal, and you've been consistent with, with that. Now, is success something difficult to attain, or is success achievable for everyone? It depends on what you're trying to be successful at. I believe that everyone can be successful. Um, depending on what it is you're looking to, to do. And I believe that it is attainable for everyone, depending. Not everybody has the same um, opportunities, mm -hmm. but I feel that once you do have those opportunities, then you definitely can be successful. Okay. Okay, let's go way back. Let's go back to your school days. Were you someone that made fantastic grades, or were you more of a, one of these social individuals? I was... Um, I was one that was social, but I graduated on time, and I had a great time in school. Yeah. Now, <laughs> in, in terms of getting into your profession, uh -huh. what is the academic training or what is the vocational training that one would need? Basically, you need to be finished high school. Mm -hmm. That's all you need is a high school uh, education, and you're able to basically you know, get into the hairdressing industry. Well, how, how does one learn the trade? Well, I believe that you should have some level of a talent for it. Mm -hmm. So if you were interested in, you can always, you know, we have loads of hair salons in Bermuda. You can always, um, you know, ask if you can volunteer or ask for a job there so that you can see if it's something that you really are interested in doing. And once you, um, you know, get that, then you can go further. So Now, what, when did you recognize that you had the talent? I recognized that I had the talent. Wow. I think as far back as eight. Wow. I started doing my own hair in primary three. Wow. I had a relaxer there and I was all excited about that. And I was able no, to... No, there might be some men watching. Relaxer. What is a relaxer? Sitting back in an easy chair. No. What is a relaxer? A relaxer is a chemical service that straightens your hair, which was very popular back in the... 80s. Yes. Now it's a trend now with natural hair is a big trend, but I love my relaxer. Okay. So let me ask, um, <laughs> relaxer, is, is that for all races of people or just for one particular race, the relaxer? It's definitely for an ethnic hair. Okay. That's what they call it. That's, it. that's the chemical term for it, ethnic hair. Oh. It relaxes ethnic hair, yes. So for Caucasian hair, you would not need a relaxer because the hair is already straight. Oh. Mm-hmm. Now, are they, I'm, I'm smiling, I want to hear what your answer is. Uh, are there some hair that's better than other hair? But that depends on the individual. Okay. That definitely depends on the individual. Like I said, it's now a big trend with natural hair now, which is great because um, it's interesting because a lot of the women who are going natural now, some of them really should never have had a relax. I'm like, you have these gorgeous curls, but it was the trend back then yeah. to have, instead of you didn't want this curly hair, you want it straight hair. Yeah. So um, for them, I wouldn't say it's anybody that has better hair or it's more suitable. It's not suitable, you know, it's not for everybody. It's not a one size fits yeah. all. Are you familiar with the term HIV? Um, 
No. Hers is bought. Oh, the. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I have heard of other terms. Oh, but okay. No, that's quite popular too. The, the, the trend where women are, oh, they kind of weave things into mm -hmm. their hair. What, what is that called? A again, Grace, extender? That's extensions, yes. Extension. Mm -hmm. Now, somehow, what has made that popular? Truthfully, some of it looks quite phony to right. me. So, uh, how long has that trend been, and do you do that at Allure? That trend has been around for some time. The trend has gotten a lot more. Um, People, the technique has gotten a lot better, mm -hmm. and it's starting to look more um, real or not yeah. so false. Yeah. Um, we, Michael at Allure does it, mm -hmm. and um, but I don't do it. I personally um, prefer to just stick with the um, integrity and the maintaining your natural hair. I know one of the things that seemed to take such a long time to do those extenders, because it, it kind of uh, is a, interwoven with your it's real hair. It's definitely a long um, service, mm -hmm. but women, that's what they want, so they yeah. sit through it okay. and they get it. Now, in terms of your own company that you co-own, what made you decide to take the leap from working with someone to owning your own business? Definitely the influence of my family. I was quite content where I was, but um, my family decided, you know, encouraged me and said, you know, if you're doing so well, why don't you, why don't you earn your own business? And I was like, okay, that's something that um, I'm sure can be done. Mm -hmm. So we worked towards it, and we basically were able to get it up and running in 2008. Okay. You mentioned family. Now, how important in, in terms of success, how important is family? I think it is really at the top important. I've had a huge um, family support, which I'm grateful for. It, it, I mean, it gives you confidence. It gives you self-worth. I mean, you just feel like you can do whatever you want with your family support. Mm. What about the individual that may not have had the family support like you? Mm -hmm. What does that do for that person in terms of achieving success? Well, I can't really speak for that person, but I would imagine it would be a little bit more difficult or harder to attain as opposed to someone like myself that has had success. Mm -hmm. But I do feel that, you know, it can be done. Mm -hmm. I think all things are possible. Um, <clears throat> we, we live in a society today where there is a single parent, many single parent homes. Does that stop or hinder, or to what degree would that hinder someone's success? Well, single parent home is nothing new. It's been going on for a long time. So, like I said, they might not have the same opportunities or the same support system as someone that comes from a two family home or whatnot. I feel that um, by working hard, they can achieve it as well. Okay. So success is attainable, as you said previously, um, for anyone, if you're willing to work hard at, at it. Now, Definitely. Back to the start of Allure, which you said in 2008. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if you can recall way back then, but after you got the encouragement from your family, mm -hmm. probably what was the next step? Was it trying to find the funding? Was it trying to find a building? Uh, was it putting together a business plan? Well, I'll tell you what. We incorporated in September 2006, and we didn't open until 2008. Mm -hmm. So that gives you kind of an idea yeah. as to how long. But I have to say that I had a cousin who um, was really like the head, the founder of getting all, she was amazing at getting everything up and running. I mean, I have to take my hat off. She basically did a fantastic job. The stuff that I had in no clue as to what um, went into opening up a business. She had a business background. She had a business background and she did up the business plan. She found the place, she negotiated, wow. she went to the bank. Like I said, she was amazing. Now, was it scary to you as a co-owner when you go to the bank and you have to borrow money, which is okay, but then you have to start repaying it? At some point, do you say, am I going to have the funds, you know, the income going to be coming in for me to, to repay the bank? Well, of course, all those things go on in your mind. And of course, with, with something new, it's growth, right? Mm -hmm. And with growth, it's always going to be some, it's the fear of the unknown yeah. and not knowing, but you have to be able to 
basically be willing to go for it. Yeah. Because if you don't, then you wouldn't ever know if you can do it. Yeah. I, I believe there are some statistics that point out that uh, new businesses fail more than they succeed. Uh, did anyone ever, I, I hear you talk about the support of your family, but back then, did anyone ever say, well, Tasha, he, chances of success might that might not be that great. Look at how many other businesses like this are in Bermuda. You know, did, did any of those thoughts come to you or did anyone suggest those things? No, no one suggested those things. Um, my family believes in God and with God, all things are possible. And he has definitely proven himself with oh, this business. Okay, you, you, you opened an, another area. Now you say with God, all things are, 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 are possible. So what role did God play in your life in terms of in terms of the business by having faith in God that's what caused us to be able to take this leap of faith because if you remember back in 2008 but like I said we incorporated in 2006 Six, right in 2006 our business plan had no recession in sight mm. our five year plan had no recession in sight so fast forward to 2008 now we open up and then 2009 2010 yeah. and to that and now so only by the grace of God wow. we are still up and running and doing great. That's that's my testimony. Yeah. How do you um, how, how do you attract workers? I'm I'm not sure how the beauty salon business work, but do you go out and do you advertise for beauticians to come and work in your shop? Yes, you do. And of uh, course, it's a new business. It was a new business. Sorry, and. Um, you know, you, you tend to have your business plan set up with a certain uh, idea mm -hmm. in mind and what you are looking for your business to do. You know what you need for your business to be able to sustain itself. So, yes, you do advertise. But remember, it's a new business and people are not kind of unsure. They don't know. Let's see. Let's give it two years. Let's see if it's going to stick around, which you can appreciate. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't really want people to leave their um, stable job mm -hmm. and we don't know whether or not this place is going to be up and running tomorrow so yeah. basically you know you do advertise and you just pray that god will make a way yeah is, is there lots of turnover in, in in your business not in my business thank mm -hmm. god we have well, been not in your but generally in the business itself in the industry yes yeah it's a huge turnover is is that because of um the, the clients aren't coming in and oh, let me ask you this: When someone, you know, when when I go to the barber shop, really, I don't. There are three barbers where I go. I don't care who cuts my hair, any one okay. of them. But mm -hmm. uh, in 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 the um, beauty salon business, does that happen, or does somebody come and that's the person I want, nobody else? I would say out of a hundred percent, you would be like the maybe ten percent of the people. That could care less. So the, most people have their favorite hairstylist slash barber that they will sit and wait for and make yes. appointments to see. They yeah. definitely have because you begin in this industry, um, you build relationships. I mean, I see you every week. We know you. We talk about your family and your job. It's definitely something that you build, and so you tend to have a relationship with the person. Now you, this is who I like, and I they do my hair well. And we have a, it's it's, a, it's something that. Um, you definitely are, it's very few people that would be like, oh, I could just anybody. So you definitely have that one person that you want to yeah. see. We will continue shortly. We will be right back with Tasha Devent. We have been talking with Tasha Devent, the co-owner of Allure Beauty Salon. Now, Tasha, before we went to the break, you were talking about relationships. And it, it makes me think of when I'm watching TV and you're looking at a, a scene in a barbershop. The guys are in there talking about their families and so forth. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they even come in there that don't need their hair done, but it's kind of like a social gathering. Mm -hmm. Does this does something like this take place in, in, in the beauty salon business? And definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's something about getting your hair done and being able to just talk and converse and good conversation, mm -hmm. that it's a it's a more relaxed environment. The industry is definitely more relaxed. And that's like when you ask about people, you know, working in different, the turnover. Mm -hmm. It's because of the industry, we're artists, right? <laughs> so we like to keep things fun and flowing and interesting. So 
it doesn't mean that it's not because you're not having a lot of clientele. It's just because you want to see something different mm -hmm. and new. And it's fun to go around and work and see how other places do things and different techniques because there's always different techniques to be learned. To be learned. I, I, when you talk about relationships, I, I agree with that. The, the way I found out about Tasha, my wife goes to where she is, and she came back and said, you've just got to talk to Tasha. She's a young Bermudian <laughs> owning her own business. You've just got to see her. Uh, I went there once, and you had a, a, a gentleman out there at mm -hmm. the desk, mm -hmm. very entertaining. I, I said, man, maybe I need to grow <laughs> long hair and have that come. But uh, the relationship part is, mm -hmm. is very true. Mm -hmm. I, I see where that is so very, very true, that when you go into a beauty salon, there is an atmosphere yes. that kind of just yes. makes you relax. And we, we were, we were like a family at Allure, yeah. so it helps that um, we all get along well. What you see is what, we, what you get, and mm -hmm. your wife can um, definitely attain to that. Yeah. She can um, attest to that about how it is when she comes into Allure and how much fun she has yeah. with um, with the gentleman you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> now, in, in terms of um, young people who want to get in the business, let me ask, do you have a relationship with some of the, the schools in terms of day release, uh, young people coming in and doing day release? Oh, definitely. Um, being a graduate from Cedar Bridge Academy, um, I definitely have a relationship with lots of the school teachers there. And um, I will definitely always want to open my doors to the students because that's basically how I got started mm -hmm. by a work day release program, which helped me to be able to go into um, salons to see if I really, re if this is something that I really, really wanted to do and not only just work, but make a career out of it. Mm -hmm. So by the students being able to come in, they get a chance to really have a feel for what goes on to the everyday um, runnings of a salon. So um, yeah. yeah. Let me ask, um, as, again, as we look at success, I heard, heard you mention that one cousin who was very instrumental very. in getting you to where you are mm -hmm. now. So as we look at success and people in your own mind who you might identify as successful, does it seem like many times in achieving success, you need a key person, someone that can motivate you, someone that can give you a helping hand along the way? Mm -hmm. I, would, I would say yes, definitely, because... Um it takes, it's, 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 I would say definitely, because you do need the um, support, the encouragement, the motivation, and someone that has a clue as to what they're doing yeah. helps, and then you can bring what you can do, and you together you're a team. Yeah. It's, I, I ask that because in, in my mind, opening up your doors to um, day release students, mm -hmm. I think you are opening what could be a career for them and, and, and being able to give them a, a helping hand. Mm -hmm. Also, you indicated that really after high school, with the proper training, you can come right into the you business. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's quite possible that some of the young people, I, you may ha even have male and me, female, that, that come in in terms of day release, or is it just basically female? We've only had females, um, but that doesn't mean that we're not open to males. Right. So it, it, it could be, depending on their experience, after they've graduated from mm -hmm. high school, they can come and get a position at, at the law. Absolutely. Now, let me ask, have you seen the behavior of young people over the years change as you've brought them in to do day release? Definitely. Definitely. I mean, I, we can see it on, we all know what time it is, what's going on in the world, let alone Bermuda. Mm -hmm. And definitely I do notice that the, the culture has definitely changed. And, um, you know, we're, I had to work for things and earn things. More mm -hmm. things are being handed down now. So easy come, easy go. Mm -hmm. So, so as, as you see that those change in, in young people, what are some of the factors you could attribute it that to? Is, is it could be parents aren't home enough with their kids because they have to work one and two jobs? Well, now if you can find two jobs because of the economy. Mm -hmm. is, is it uh, a result of the media? In your opinion, why has the culture in terms of teenagers, why, why has that changed? I think it's just the way life's going right now, and it's it's lots of things that they are able to do and that have at their fingertips that we didn't have at our fingertips. You mm -hmm. have the World Wide Web now. Oh, they yeah. have to go home and go right into that and basically take care of themselves. They don't have to interact with anybody. So their personal skills, their, inter their interpersonal skills are not there because they basically talk to each other on um, 
the computer or the phones. So it's lots of things that can attribute to why they're going differently. I couldn't say that single parents because it's lots of that's not that's not new. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's got to be something else. Um, can I? I mean, I'm not an expert on what's going on with the younger people <laughs> nowadays. I can only say that. Um, it's just the way the world's going now. It's just different. Mm -hmm. It's definitely different. Now, in your salon, how many people are in, do you employ? It's seven of us all together. Wow. Mm -hmm. Seven. Now, about how many hours a day are you generally, are people on their feet in a beauty salon? Well, it, it depends. Um, you, we do work eight-hour days. Are you standing for the hill eight hours? No, nope, because you can sit down. Your client's under the dryer. You can go sit down and grab something to eat. You can sit, you know, so you're not standing up the whole time. Mm -hmm. But you are on your feet quite a, quite a couple of hours. Yeah. yeah. Now, you also indicated that you do not do the extension. So is there a specialty that, that you have in terms of hair? I don't have a specific favorite thing. I, I love all of it mm -hmm. that I do. So, some beauticians, do they have a specialty? Oh, definitely, uh, definitely. Some people do specialize in coloring, specialize in cutting, specializing mm -hmm. um, in relaxing or perming. But I love all of it. Okay. And, and you can do all of it uh, with the exception of the extension, which you choose not to do. I choose that. not, yeah. Now, what is the future of Allure? The future of Allure is for Allure to be successful, for Allure to maintain itself, for Allure to allow me to retire and not have to worry about anything. Oh. That's the future for <laughs> Allure, for it to be around for as long as God sees fit. Very good. Now, um, if, if you can identify maybe and willing to share maybe one of the biggest struggles that you've had in terms of getting a lord to where it is today mm -hmm. is it financing uh, is it finding the, the proper workers to be there so what is one of the biggest struggles that you've had um the biggest struggle was getting the right team mm. You know, I hear you talk, relationships must be really important yes. to you. I hear mm -hmm. you, go, you know, I'm asking you what's one of the difficulties. And you say getting the right team, which deals with relationships. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It all has to be a fit, yeah. you know, because I feel if you go to a place where not everyone's on the same, same, you know, accord, basically, mm -hmm. you're going to have friction and tension. And people come to the hair salon to relax and to be feeling better about themselves, mm -hmm. not to come and feel like you're listening to this person's drama and that person's drama. We don't do that at all. Yeah. It's definitely a good experience. And like I challenge you to ask your wife how she feels. Yeah. In a, er, earlier in, in, in talking with Tasha, I used the term boss referring to her. And she said, no, mm -hmm. no. I'm, she was very uncomfortable, mm -hmm. very uncomfortable mm -hmm. with, with, with that term. How do your workers see you, you think? I feel that, um, like I said, we work together. I'm yeah. working with them. I'm right down in the trenches digging with them. So I would like to believe that they think I'm great. Yeah, very good. <laughs> now, um, you, you mentioned uh, Allure being around for a long time. Do you ever perceive maybe uh, opening a branch in St. George's or Somerset? Does that ever come across your mind? I mean, that sounds great, right? <laughs> as long as we have the team to do it and the amount of clientele, then we can open up Allure's anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. Now, we have been talking with Tasha Devent, the co-owner of Allure, one of the preeminent uh, beauty salons in, in Bermuda. Here, one other question. Do you do all types of hair? Let me ask, because you are um, ethnic, mm -hmm. does that mean that you can only do ethnic hair? Absolutely not. I trained in London where we did predominantly Caucasian hair. Mm -hmm. So we can do all aspects of hair. And does Allure cater to all aspects? Absolutely. Of hair? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. So not just one particular race or one particular ethnic. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's here and you know how to do it. Everybody is welcome at Allure. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, Tasha, we thank you so much for being with us on Issues. And we look forward to being with you next time. We've been talking about success. And again, a couple of things that Tasha mentioned that I've seen in everyone 
uh, in terms of talking about success. Money is not the most important thing. No, they're not saying that they don't mm -hmm. need money, mm -hmm. but it's not the most important thing. Uh, I've talked about relationship and family. Tasha mentioned it was a cousin of hers that really helped her and alert to be where it is today. Talked about God. So these are uh, ingredients that I'm seeing in those individuals that I have uh, interviewed and that have said they're successful. They've um, identified God. They've identified that money is not the really major thing that they need, and it's very nice to know that. So, again, thank you for being with us on Issues, and we will see you next time.